there are two types of digital image makers. The ones that are confused, angry, annoyed, and full of rage, and the ones that have not yet dealt with the incomprehensible mess that is color management. If you create any sort of imagery with your computer, you absolutely need to get acquainted with color spaces, color profiles, and color management. Doesn't matter if you're on Windows or Mac. Let me show you why. Let's say you made an image using your favorite digital image making software. Be it Paint, Blender, Figma, Snipping Tool, or even Photoshop. Maybe you've downloaded something off the internet. I'll save this image I've rendered with Blender on my desktop and save it as JPEG. RGB. JPEG. Save. I'll make this window smaller. And I'll open this image in Affinity Photo. Microsoft Paint and Chrome for good measure. Hold on, is it the expected result that the same image looks different in different software? Let's use a color picket provided by Microsoft Power Toys to inspect the colors. I know what you're thinking, it's not that. We will dive deeper into color picket related issues in part two of the series. But for now, let's use it as any person would use it. Let's measure the colors, and of course, let's use hex codes. That's useful, right? Yep, hex color codes will be part three of the series. Okay, that's D7676 something. That is FEFD something. That is D61, but that's different than D72. And that is, of course, FF000. Excellent. Same image, four different results. If our client, who is not very IT literate, sent us this file and asked us to use this red, which one out of the 400 reds should we use? And this is the very first lap in the face that many people who create images face. Let me note that I'm not even using a custom color profile, also known as display characterization or display calibration profile. This is the default color profile that came with my Dell XPS. It's a wider gamut display based on Adobe RGB, so it comes with this pre-calibrated color profile. Okay, how did we end up with four different results of the same input? The first issue is the image is not tagged. It does not have a color profile associated with the file. That means that any software is free to interpret the colors any way they wish, no restrictions. Some software will blast whatever your screen is capable of showing, like paint or snipping tool, for example. The red, green, and blue in the file is just that, maximum values of those three colors. Other, more intelligent software will assume the image should have been tagged as sRGB, as it's still sort of the industry standard. The software will display it as an sRGB image. That is okay-ish for consumers, but not ideal for image makers. And this shows you how important it is to tag your images with the intended color profile. Sometimes this action is called embedding a color profile, other times attaching a color profile, or simply tagging. So the general rule of thumb is that every image you produce should have a color profile tag. If you work on an sRGB monitor in an sRGB working space, your life is easy. Just tag your images with an sRGB profile. If the image has no profile assigned, click Assign ICC Profile and select sRGB. Remember to make sure to embed the color profile when exporting the image. Easy. Done. You can skip to chapter called Inspecting an Image. But if you're one of the poor souls who's forced to work on an extended gamut monitor on Windows, or if you're crazy enough to do this to yourself voluntarily, listen closely. The rest of you, if you're still here, you can listen normally. I want to walk you through two scenarios. One, getting the exported file to match what you see on your display when you create images with unmanaged software. And two, getting the exported file to look as close as possible to what you see on your display when creating images for sRGB displays. For the first scenario, we will use a very popular graphics design software, Microsoft Paint. But keep in mind that if your software does not tag images with any color profile, 
it is very likely it's unmanaged and will behave similarly to paint. It will show you whatever your screen is capable of and save the images with no color profile attached. So if I export this image as a JPEG, it will create an untagged image. Color profile not attached. And this is the default behavior of many other image making programs that I do not wish to call out by name here on YouTube yet. That means you will not get the result you expected to get because many image viewing applications and the whole internet assumes that untagged images are sRGB. What we need to do to get the colors that are similar to what's on our display is to first tag the image with our display profile. To do that, just open the newly created JPEG with your favorite digital image editor. Mine is Affinity Photo. Then attach or assign your display's profile. When you export the file, make sure the embed ICC profile is ticked and hit export. Now we can open both of these files and see how they differ. This will make sure that you are seeing the intended result as well as you have included instructions on how to read the file for other software or other people. Most devices don't have wide gamut displays, as well as many websites strip the color profile information off the image. Combine that with a lack of support for newer ICC profile versions, general issues with color management and, of course, simply ignoring tagged profiles altogether, and you have an image that looks incorrectly on 99% of the displays. The way out of this issue is converting the image from your displays profile to sRGB. Here's a good way of doing this. Open your untagged image, assign your displays profile, and then simply convert the image to sRGB. On export, make sure the embed ICC profile is tagged and hit export. You would have to do the exact same procedure of attaching and converting color profile if you were capturing screenshots with a Windows snipping tool. Just because Windows is a pain in the backside, there is no easy way to inspect the image and figure out whether it has a color profile embedded or not. You can only see whether the image has an sRGB profile attached, but you can't see any other profiles other than sRGB, which makes it pretty useless. I'm happy to tell you that I have a solution for this. I've found an easy way to inspect an image without doing too much computer computering. The tool is called Exif Tool, and it's a widely used open source executable made by Phil Harvey. I've linked the website below if you want more info. Here's how you set it up. Download the zip file that's linked in the description, extract, hit Windows R on your keyboard, and type in shell, send to, and hit enter. This will open your send to folder. Now simply move the executable from the extracted folder to the send to folder. Now if you right click any image, be it JPEG, TIFF or any of the camera formats, to simply inspect it, go send to, exif tool. And here's all the metadata included in the image. And here's the profile associated with it. We can check this one as well, send to, exif tool. This one says sRGB. Easy. If you're on a Mac, the color profile is displayed in the get info window. Okay, problem solved. End of story, right? Just tag your images, right? Well, no, of course not. Don't be silly. Even if the image is tagged correctly, many, many software packages simply ignore it. Just very recently, Microsoft has added color profile loading to their native photos app an app whose sole purpose is to display images. But apps like Snipping Tool, Paint, Windows Desktop, Windows Explorer will simply refuse to deal with color profiles. So there are three types of color control in Windows. First one, Windows Color Management. It controls only a handful of applications, like photos. The second one is proprietary color management. Color management done by software itself, 
such as Photoshop, Affinity Photo, uh, GIMP, etc. And lastly, no management, completely unmanaged, such as the snipping tool, paint and many, many other software packages that actually deal with color, but don't bother implementing any color management. And of course, it's up to you to figure out which applications read the color profiles and which don't, which write or embed the color profile on export. Otherwise, havoc will ensue. Life is a bit easier on the Mac OS side. Mac OS is a color managed OS. Only a handful of applications are permitted to escape its firm grip on color. Sadly, an OS cannot control what individual programs do with files they export. You can render something in Blender and save it as JPEG, but Blender simply does not attach a color profile to the image. So that will still have to be done manually. macOS has its own small problems here and there, but overall it's a much more pleasant operating system to do image making on. It doesn't matter which OS you are on, you have to get into habit of checking images and their profiles. If there's no attached color profile, that's a problem, and it's up to you to fix it. At least now you know how. Okay, enough ranting for today. And find me on part two of this video, where I will be talking about the dangers of using a color picker. See you soon. Bye.